I'd like to demonstrate the use of Doodly in PowerPoint with the following simple demonstration video. It's not a sophisticated video, but I hope it will show a couple of possibilities for using the two programs together. Follow me for instructions on how I made this. Open up the Doodly program and create a whiteboard scene. Here I'm going to set my parameters to no transition for all scenes and to three seconds time at the end of each scene. I'm also going to choose a custom background and the reason I'm using this is just so I can show transitions in PowerPoint. I'm going to drag in Frustrated Adam and use him as one of my characters in this video. Then I'm going to just duplicate the scene three more times because I have four scenes total in this video. I'm going to save it as Doodly and PP Test. Now I'm going to show you the storyboard I built earlier with four scenes total. The first one is Adam frustrated. The second one he's on the phone with a different colored background. The third one is Adam and Claire in a dotted line and the fourth is Adam presenting. Frustrated Adam has a three and a quarter second draw time with hand. Phone Adam is static because I want it to look like he's morphed from Frustrated Adam in PowerPoint. Desk Adam is static, but the dotted lines and Claire draw in with these specifications. I've chosen no hand drawing because it would interfere with the text to be drawn later in PowerPoint. The fourth scene is the call to action by presenting Adam. He's static because this and all scenes will have additional animation provided in PowerPoint. I'll just save the project with the changes in each scene and move on to the next step. You can see that my four scene storyboard is here in my Doodly files. I'm going to quickly duplicate the scene four more times, keeping the first with the original name. The four duplicates will be given the individual names of scene one, scene two, three, and four. Then I'll go back and open each one up. Opening scene one, I'll keep only frustrated Adam and delete the rest. Then I export this at the highest resolution possible with a file name and place I can find easily later. Repeating, I'll do the same with the rest of the scenes, exporting each with their own unique file name. Here, I'll quickly do it with scene three as an example and export it in the highest resolution possible. You need to do this because it will look very pixelated in PowerPoint as any of the assets are drawn from Doodly. Now you can see that I have all four scenes as separate videos in Doodly and also in my file manager. I'm going to open up PowerPoint. In here I've already created four blank slides all with the same specifications. All the transitions will fade in for a second and a half duration and come in after the one second of pause after the last scene instead of on click. I have chosen this to show how fade can make a static image look like it's morphed into a different image. There are many different transitions in PowerPoint, which gives you a little bit more variation than you get in Doodly. Now I'm going into my File Manager, or as it's called in Mac, Finder. 
I'm pulling in to PowerPoint slide 1 the file called Scene 1 that I exported from Doodly. The first thing I'm going to do is change the settings for playback. This PowerPoint version automatically defaults to start the movie in Quick Sequence, but I want to make sure to change it to Automatically for all of them, so the transitions will be smooth with no hesitation. You will also notice in my particular version, PowerPoint automatically assigns a stop movie ending to an imported video. But I'm going to let the transitions determine when the scene ends, so I will just delete this setting in the animation menu. I've cheated a little bit by having another PowerPoint file already started where the scenes are already complete. So I'll just go over there and copy and paste the assets from the finished one to save some time. We have text and a piggy bank graphic. In the working version, you can see that the animation specs that were assigned in the finished version are copied along with the assets. The text comes in as a zoom, one second duration, set to with previous, which means it comes in at the same time that the video starts, but with a three second delay. The piggy bank animation also starts with previous, meaning the video, but with 3.5 seconds delayed, and its stretch animation takes 2 seconds. Let's take a look in this preview. What we have is Adam drawing, the type fading in, and the piggy bank being stretched. Let's move to the second slide. I'll pull in the second doodly exported video. You can see that the background's a little bit lighter. Right off the bat, change from quick sequence to automatic start for the video, remove the end time in the animation menu, go to the finished PowerPoint to copy the other two assets, and then back to the working one to paste them in. You can see in the animation menu that they have the same specs as when I first created them. The text flies in for two seconds with the video, but with a half second delay start, the photo takes two seconds to fade in and is delayed only one second after the video start. Let's take a look in preview to see if we like it. It looks okay. So now I'm going to play the first two scenes together and I want you to pay attention to the transition between scenes. The darker orange to the lighter orange and frustrated Adam morphing into phone atom. It's a nice way to move from one static scene to another. And it almost looks as though he's raising his hand between the two scenes. Let's go to the third slide. Import the third doodly scene three video. Change the specs to automatic versus quick sequence. Delete the ending video parameter in the animation menu and sneak over to the finished PowerPoint file. I'll copy my assets and bring them over into the working PowerPoint. I want you to see that I have done a couple of different animations for the text. The He's Glad text bounces in for two seconds with a 2.5 second delay after the video starts. The clear text curves up in one second with a 2.5 second delay and the arrow first wipes in from the bottom then blinks three times. Let's preview this and see the doodly dotted line and clear being drawn in and the other assets appearing at the same time. With doodly of course you can't have two different actions happening at the same time but importing those videos into PowerPoint and adding animations of your own on assets you brought in will allow you to do that. There is a dotted line and clear from the doodly, and there is the text and arrow from PowerPoint. We'll preview from the second scene to see the transition in backgrounds and assets. Let's move on to the fourth scene. We'll pull in my Adam video not from the file menu, but rather from the previous PowerPoint because I want to show you something a little bit different. I don't have to change the specs this time on any of the settings because the copied video will have the same specifications 
as when I first set it up in the finished PowerPoint project. I have chosen for the video to come in as a zoom animation. However, the problem with the zoom is that you see the white background behind the video, and it looks like the green rectangle itself is zooming, not Adam. So I'm going to show you a little trick to solve this. I'm going to change the background color of the slide to the exact same color as the doodly video. So it looks like Adam is zooming in and not the rectangle itself. To do that, I will go over to Format Background, then the Color Fill Options Arrow drop-down, and then More Colors. The Eyedropper option will let me pick any color on my screen. I'll click on the green video background. The color indicator square turns green. Clicking OK sets the background to the exact same color as the video. A preview now shows just Adam zooming in, not only the video rectangle. A little cheat to copy the assets from the finished slides, and the animations for each are shown here. I want to point out the ABC accounting phrase. It's a cool feature made in a website called cooltext.com. I'll show you a link at the end of the video. A preview of the last scene. I'm adding a final black slide and a fade transition for a fade to black effect after the last scene. Here's a quick preview of the whole thing, a bit speeded up. It's of all four finished slides to see how the animation effects and transitions look. I'm happy with the way things look, so it's just a matter of choosing to export my video, give it a final name and place, choose MP4, and of course I want presentation quality, which is the best it can be, and export. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Here's the cooltext.com site. It's really easy to make text in a wide range of styles and options. I use it a lot instead of buying fonts or importing fonts just to use once.